Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome back to my C++ series. Last time we talked about virtual functions and today we're gonna to be talking about a specific type of virtual function, something called a pure virtual function. A pure virtual function in C++ is essentially the same as an abstract method or an interface in other languages such as Java or C Sharp. Basically, a pure virtual function allows us to define a function in a base class that does not have an implementation and then force subclasses to actually implement that function. If we take a look at our example from the previous video, which was about virtual functions, you can see that we had a virtual get name function inside the entity class, and then we had an override for that function inside our player class. By having this get name function inside our base class with an actual body means that overriding it in a subclass such as player is entirely optional. If we didn't override it, then we could still call player.getName, however, it would of course return the entity string. However, in some cases, it doesn't make sense for us to provide this default implementation. We actually might want to force the subclass to actually provide its own definition for a certain function. In object oriented programs, programming is actually quite common for us to create a class that consists only of unimplemented methods and then force a subclass to actually implement them. This is something that's often referred to as an interface. So an interface being a class that only consists of unimplemented methods and acting as a template of sorts. And since this interface class doesn't actually contain method implementations, it's not actually possible for us to instantiate that class. Let's see if we can make this get name function inside entity a pure virtual function. To do that, I'm just going to get rid of the body and instead of the body, just write equals zero. Keep in mind that it still has to be defined as virtual, but the equals zero is essentially making it a pure virtual function, meaning that it has to be implemented in a subclass if you want to be able to instantiate that class. So by doing this, a few things have actually happened. First of all, if you look at main, you can see that we now no longer have the ability to actually instantiate that entity class. We must give it some kind of subclass that actually has that function implemented. So in this case, player, for example. And of course, we need to provide some kind of string as well. You can see the player works fine. However, that's only because we've actually implemented that get name function. If I decide to comment out that implementation, you can see that we can't instantiate player either. So essentially, you can only instantiate the class if it actually has all of those pure virtual functions implemented. Or a class is further up in the hierarchy. So for example, if player were to be a subclass of another class which did implement that get name function, that would also be fine. But the idea is that get name, that pure virtual function has to actually be implemented in order for us to be able to create an instance of this class. All right, let's take a look at a better example. I'm going to undo everything that we had done here. All right, that looks pretty good. Suppose that we wanted to write a function that would print the class name of every class that we had here. So what I'll do is I'll type void print. As my parameter, I'm going to want to take in some kind of class type that we'll call obj, for example, and then what I'm going to want to do is actually print the class's name. So maybe we have something like obj.getClassName. So what I actually need here is a type that guarantees that we actually have a getClassName function. We need a type that provides that getClassName function. And that's exactly what an interface is. Let's go ahead and call this type printable and we'll set it up. So at the very top here, I'll make a new class called printable. And the only thing this is going to have, I'm gonna make a public virtual string function that returns a string here, get class name, and it's going to be pure virtual. So I'm gonna set it equal to zero. Then I'm going to make entity implement that interface. Note that player is already an entity, so we don't have to implement printable. However, if it wasn't for whatever reason, we could just add a comma and then implement an interface like so. Keep in mind that I keep calling this an interface, but of course it is just a class. The reason I've given it the name interface here is because all it has is that pure virtual function and that is it. Other languages actually do have an interface keyword instead of class, but C++ does not. Interfaces are just classes in C++. So now everything has to have this get class name function. If it does not, you can't actually instantiate it. Let's go ahead and add a get class name function for entity. Now, if we were to do what we did here inside player, I'll just write S std string get class name return entity, then we actually have a few issues. First of all, our problem of not being able to instantiate entity is solved, of course, because we have provided that function. However, you'll notice that we haven't provided one for player. So if I go down to print, let's make this a pointer and actually call print with both player and entity, 
we'll get rid of print names, but we're not confused here. Here, five. Of course, you can see that we get entity printing twice because we haven't actually provided a definition in player. However, if we do so, if I just try and copy this get class name, which of course is an override, let's not forget that. If I pop that down here and rename this to player, I can hit a five here to run my code. And you can see that I now get the appropriate class name printing. And all of that's coming from that one print function that takes in a printable object. It doesn't really care what class that is. We could create a completely different class here, such as A, that is a printable class, meaning that it has to have that function. If it does not have that get class name function, then you won't be able to instantiate an instance of this class. If we do something like this, I've created a brand new class, I've made it printable, meaning that I have implemented this function. I can now call print like this. Of course, don't write this code exactly because it's a memory leak, but for testing, it's fine. If I do something like this, you can see that we now get that A class printing here. And because it is a printable, it is guaranteed to have that get class name function. That's how this whole thing works because it knows that anything that is printable has a get class name function for this to actually call. If you do not implement that function, then you will not be able to instantiate the class. So that's it. That is what an interface is in C++. That's what a pure virtual function is in C++. Very, very useful stuff. The number one reason it's really used is for situations like this, where you want to be able to guarantee that a class has a certain function so that you can pass it to a fairly generic method that will just call that function or do whatever it needs to do. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, you can leave any questions or comments you have in the comment section below. I try to reply to as many comments as I can, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.